God 2.0, the big dick. <laughs> I'm sort of an atheist, so God poems fascinate me. Here's another from Barbara Ross, and I would like to thank Paul Howe for bringing this to my attention. God in Hawaii. And God was there in the dark when I woke sleepless, everything tilting toward, toward dire. Me, the mattress, the hotel pipes, and the poison I suspected the hotel of using on birds. And in them, too, especially in the white sparrows that seemed to have already ascended to martyrdom, letting the brown sparrows pluck the crumbs from their beaks and give them a couple of pecks in the bargain. I saw God in the hot lava at dusk, unzipping the mountain, God above in the pink sky and in the air in between the color of sweet potato. I saw God swinging the big dick at the boat launch, strutting the dock like someone who's paid too much for something and flaunts it. I saw God in the 82-year-old woman who sold us lays at the airport and flexed her biceps to prove to us she bowls every Tuesday. I saw God in the breath parting my daughter's lips before she woke. And I saw God in each and every Hawaiian vowel and in the feeling I got from touching Alfred's arm as if some little gods were racing up and down, lighting torches all over the property. I kept on seeing God everywhere, dancing in a grass skirt, strumming a ukulele. Why not in me? Writing hot is not better or worse than staying cool. It's a choice as far as our own temperaments will allow. Why does Rass choose hotness at least a moment of outburst in the middle of God in Hawaii? Or a more answerable question, what does hotness allow her poem to do? This poem is clear about what it's about, or is it? You could give it a three-sentence pitch. Woman visits Hawaii, woman sees God everywhere, woman wonders why she fails to see God in herself. But that would sell the poem short. For this is other elaborate set of circumstances that provide emotional cross-current as well as situational context for the failure of faith and for the final sudden constricted yelp and self-laceration at the end. We understand from the title that this list poem has a sense of humor, whatever other sorrows and darknesses may emerge. God in Hawaii is an incongruity, at least a little funny, in a way that God at church or God at sundown or in the wind would not be. The poem is accomplished with some biblical diction, and God was there, um, combined with anaphoric testimony, and I saw, and I saw, and I saw. Declamation is, however, tempered by mattresses, pipes, boat launches, biceps, and sweet potatoes, little workaday things. Ras begins her litany in insomnia, the dire feeling that accompanies too much sleeplessness. Insignificant birds act in the, way, in the bad ways people act. God's in them. What does God get up to next? An operation curious in scale and in gesture. Is God a gigantic flasher, unzipping his volcano pants and ejaculating himself from his own mountain? <laughs> this is striking, funny, and a little horrifying, but then the poet disarms God, feminizes him, and that maybe emasculates him by turning him into pretty pink, sweet orange colors in the sky. Am I overdoing the sex thing? <laughs> My undergrads accuse me of that somewhat regularly. I didn't even notice the sexual content here, actually, until I got to the next few lines and the poem's outburst. I saw God swinging the big dick at the boat launch, strutting the dock like someone who's paid too much for something and flaunts it. Robert Frost um, famously wrote in a letter, All I care a cent for is to catch sentence tones that haven't been brought to book. I don't say make them, mind you, but to catch them. No one makes them or adds to them. They are always there, living in the cave of the mouth. And Ross's wonderfully weird couplet, I think, is a, a sentence tone, a cave thing, with its belittling, vulgar diction. Uh, it's a piece of speech shouldering its way out of a piece of writing. That's the way I think of it. It turns God into absurd Mr. Macho, flaunting his dick and his boy toy. Suddenly, we know a whole lot more about the speaker. She's fed up, probably with men or a certain kind of man. God, too, changes here, where God was part of nature, even if he was engaged in strange volcanic exhibitionism. Now he has been reduced to a petty man in a midlife crisis. 